Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. So we, I, I'll talk about representation theory. Yeah, and uh, so I've taught this course before and uh, you know, there are actually video lectures online as well, but uh, I'll, I'll anyway go through uh, things, uh, but it was a semester long course and we'll have to uh, remove some uh, topics and do a subset of it uh, at a somewhat faster pace maybe. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I mean, they, there's no point me just talking and, uh, you know, uh, you not understanding. Yeah. So please feel free to ask me as many questions as you want. Yeah. Uh, interrupting me uh, occasionally so that I know that, you know, things are making sense. So I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll start. Uh, so let me share my screen. Um, Yes, so this is uh, during the COVID period, we, we were giving online lectures. So this, uh, to give everyone a board feel, I, I decided to do lectures this way. So, uh, so I, I write on my screen, yeah, and it comes out this way. So I highlight here. So you won't be able to see my, my video uh, uh, because, uh, you know, it will be facing up, uh, up uh, the ceiling. Yeah, so you'll see the fan instead. Uh, so I'll, I'll turn off my video. But if you have some questions, maybe I, while answering, I can I can uh, switch on my camera and uh, maybe things will be more uh, more coherent. Okay. So let me turn off the video. And uh, yeah. So I don't know. How, uh, there's this this covers the part of the screen. So I don't know how to get rid of this. Uh, maybe this is how. Yeah. So can you all see the screen uh, shared? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, so, uh, so, you know, group theory is slightly tricky. Yeah? So people uh, are maybe um, you, the way group is defined, you, you give some elements. So, and uh, you know, the group operations. And if you want to know, what uh, anything about that group, then it's sort of a, a tricky business. Yeah, so uh, there is no of an abstract group, so the description is somewhat tricky. So one way to think about uh, uh, groups is via via matrices. Linear algebra is somewhat uh, so you you have seen matrices, etc. Even in your high school. Yeah, so one way to think about representation theory is to Think of uh, think of groups as sitting inside uh, inside uh, a set of matrices, yeah, or interpreting group elements as matrices. So that is uh, that is the so this is one way of understanding groups, yeah. You know, one direct way is to do the group theory the way people do it. The other way is to understand all it. So what is called representation, which we'll talk to, you know, which we'll uh, define today and study. Okay. So, um, so uh, if you are given a finite, so in this um, course we will, uh, or in this uh, series of talk, we'll concentrate on finite groups. Though uh, many of the definition works even for uh, for infinite groups, and uh, and um, and somehow uh, and the vector space will be finite dimensional. And uh, you know, if uh, and there are of course uh, representations on Hilbert spaces and stuff, which other people do, um, uh, but uh, but we will work only on finite dimensional vector spaces. Okay, so finite dimensional vector space over a field K. Yeah, so this should be a field over a field K. Okay, then a representation of G is a group homomorphism. So you can think of it as a group homomorphism from G to GLV. So what is GLV? This is um, uh, GLV is the set of uh, uh, automorph uh, linear maps from V to itself. Yeah. So I'm assuming you know some group theory and some linear algebra. But if you have some questions about the notation as well, feel free to ask. Yeah. So these are all in uh, linear transformations of the vector space V, which are invertible. Yeah. So okay, so if V is uh, V is a uh, n-dimensional vector space, and if you have fixed a basis, then this this is uh, uh, this is, will be in, in isomorphic to uh, n by n matrices. Yeah. 
So in this case, uh, we, so when you have such a, such a homomorphism, this homomorphism, you can call it as a representation of G. So V is called a representation. Okay. So, uh, so this is one definition. Uh, you can think of it in a different way. Yeah. So, uh, so if I take uh, an element G of uh, uh, a little element G in G uh, of uh, of this thing, then uh, uh, if if I apply rho uh, rho to it, it gives you an automorphism of V. Yeah. A linear uh, a linear automorphism of V. So G dot V. Uh, so you, you we can use this notation G dot V. So we define it as uh, rho G of V. Yeah. So the, uh, what, uh, what G does is it it gives uh, G dot V is a transformation of V. Yeah. So it, uh, maybe you can think of it as a action of uh, G acts on V. Yeah. Because uh, G G dot V will give you another vector, and this is an action because you know this is uh, rho G is an automorphism. Yeah. So this is a group action, and uh, it has a nice property that this uh, this is not just a arbitrary or, um, arbitrary bijection of V, but it's a linear bijection. Yeah, so it is linear, which means um, you know G dot alpha V one plus V uh, two is alpha G dot V one plus G dot V two. Yeah, so V is a representation that uh, it is same as saying that uh, G acts on V, and it and the action is linear. And conversely, if you if you give an action of G on V, which uh, such that the action is linear, which precisely means uh, this statement, yeah, then uh, that's same as giving this homomorphism from G to GLV, yeah. This G dot V uh, defines a um, defines a bijection of V, and that uh, that and that bijection is linear. So that uh, that rho G is going to be a uh, lie in GL. So these two are equivalent. So I hope this is clear. Yeah, that these two are equivalent. So that's the definition of a representation. Yeah. And uh, so so many times people people just say. V so one should uh, one should keep both V and rho in the notation, but sometimes people just write V is a representation of G. Yeah, but uh, one uh, uh, by abuse of notation, like M is an R module. Yeah, so so there should be a notation for how R acts on M as well. But um, uh, we know what it means. Yeah, so so sometimes just V is used. Yeah. So let's see an uh, uh, easy example first. Yeah. So let's say we. So and uh, by the way, we will be working mostly over field of characteristic zero. Yeah. So the definitions will work uh, um, work for any field, but for instance, this complete reducibility, which we'll see today, works only in characteristic zero. Yeah. Uh, unconditionally. So characteristic zero field means uh, field like uh, real numbers, complex numbers, rational numbers, those kind of things. So, so let uh, V be the uh, one dimensional vector space C. Uh, so, and so the base field is also C and uh, V is one dimensional vector space and G is a finite group. Yeah. Then, uh, then giving a group representation is um, giving a homomorphism from G to C star. Yeah, this is uh, so is a, uh, because GL of C is just um, uh, invertible elements in C, which is C uh, C minus zero. Yeah, C star is just C minus zero. So we need a group homomorphism like this. So of course, um, uh, you know, uh, if you take uh, G, it should map to some, some root of unity, yeah? Because, you know, G is a finite group. So after, after you raise it to the order of G, it becomes one. So that tells you that rho, rho G is a root of unity for all G, yeah? So, uh, so if you have a one-dimensional representation, then the image, though uh, I mean the codomain, though is whole of C star, the image can't be whole of. C, I mean, can't uh, has to lie on that unit circle, yeah, uh, in in the complex numbers. So it can only be uh, some elements of that. Even on the unit circle, it can't be um, anything arbitrary, yeah, because it has to be a root of unity. So uh, very limited choices. Okay. 
And we say that uh, rho is a trivial homomorphism if, if d acts trivially. Yeah, so uh, this action is trivial or this group homomorphism is trivial. That means everything maps to one. Yeah. So, uh, um, so d dot v is equal to v for all, all v. Then you say that uh, this is a trivial action and, and all d. So, uh, so that, uh, that is a trivial representation. Okay. So that's uh, that's the first example. Uh, so, so of course, uh, it, so if you take, so I, I have given you an abstract example here, so to speak. So you take some group, yeah, Z mod N Z. So then, uh, uh, so if D is Z mod N Z, then uh, maybe, so maybe let's just uh, actually give you an example, Z mod N Z. And then you can give a map to C star and uh, a group homomorphism which sends one bar to e power two pi i over n, yeah? And then you know where two bar has to go, it, I, I, uh, uh, square of this and so on, yeah? So, so this, is, this is a group representation, uh, a non-trivial group representation of Z model. If you send everything to, to one, then, um, then it will be a trivial representation and so on. So one dimensional representation is just group homomorphism from D to C star. They are very easy to understand, yeah? They are just, uh, uh, you are trying to understand homomorphism from a group to, to a nice thing, which is, I mean, the target is also very nice, C star is an abelian group. So in particular, the kernel of these will all factor through the abelianization of G. So they are, they are, they are very uh, simple and nice enough uh, representation to understand. One-dimensional representation. Another uh, ab abstract way of uh, another uh, class of representation uh, one can cook up is uh, using group action. Is this so? Suppose G acts on a set finite set X. Yeah. So that means uh, if you take uh, an element G in G, G uh, it determines an automorphism of X. Yeah. So so G acts on a finite set X means. Uh, G, uh, so you know what it means. Yeah, G X. Uh, uh, every element gives a bijection of X, yeah? and it's compatible with uh, uh, with the group action. So now you uh, so using this action, you can deter, you can give a representation of G. Okay. So what you uh, what we do is consider a vector space whose bases are elements of X. Yeah, so let Vx be a C vector space with basis consisting of elements of X. Okay, so say X has some, uh, some N number of elements, X1 to Xn, then you consider mm, Vx to be a direct sum of these N elements. Yeah, C X1, uh, I mean, uh, and this N dimensional vector space. So here a line is missing. Yes. So second point, second point make me calica G X on a finite set X. Let V X be a complex vector space. Ah, C C vector space. Okay. So the base field is C. Yeah. You can take any field, but uh, I just made it uh, concrete. Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Sir. Ah, ah. Yeah. So somehow my pen has stopped writing. Sir, uh, what is CX? Uh, what does CX mean? So it's basically I'm indexing it by X1, X2, and so on. Yeah, that is what your question is. So mm -hmm. first coordinate is, so you know, um, CX1 means a vector space, which is isomorphic to C, but uh, I mean, um, I, I, so I, a typical element here, I want to write it as summation AI XI, yeah. So it's n copies, uh, but the first uh, first coordinate I'm labeling it by x1, the second coordinate I'm labeling it by x2, and so on. Okay, sir. Okay, it's just a notation. Any other question? Yeah, so this is C. I, I don't know why I can't write it, but... Uh, yeah, so somehow something is... Uh, um, yeah. 
So how do I make Zoom full screen? Is, uh, can you see the complete screen? Mm, I think so, but uh, I think it's complete, uh, full screen, right? It is full screen, yeah. Uh, Manish, there is an arrow. Look at your right side. There is a you know diagonal arrow. I don't know what that means. Diagonal arrow. Uh, look at your right end. Top, mm -hmm. top. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you click something happens there. Or not. Yeah, that I know, but that is uh, that has something to do with one note. Okay. Uh, let me let me just reshare this. Yeah, one okay. second. Sure, sure. Just some. Ah, huh. now let me see if I can write. I still can't. I still can't write one second. Um, yeah, usually this doesn't give me a trouble, but uh, um, somehow. Uh, insert, insert, draw all those options. I don't know. Actually, I'm not familiar with this. No, no. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't require all that. I was just okay. writing right now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but it's suddenly stopped. Okay. Um, yeah, but maybe, uh, yeah, so, so thankfully everything is written. Most of it is written. Yeah. But uh, I would like to highlight so that it's easier for people to follow. Um, Give me one more second, yeah. sorry. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, there's some problem, but so I'll, I don't know if I will be able to highlight. Yeah, but uh, this writing device, I don't know. There is no connection as such. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. So I'll uh, I'll try to see in the in the middle if somehow the highlighting becomes okay, then I'll I'll try to do that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, bear with me. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, I think we should try closing this notepad and then reopen the. Yeah, that's what I tried. Yeah, that oh, is okay. what I tried, but it didn't okay. work. I tried okay. it two three times. Yeah, it generally works right. for me, so. Uh, that that works for me as well, but uh, somehow today it's not working. So, uh, so let's let's uh, let's continue. Yeah, hopefully it will come back. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so this uh, this VX is a vector space on uh, n gen uh, n uh, generators, uh, which is uh, n uh, n basis of length n x one to x n, and this is the notation. Yeah, and uh, so so the action is that uh, g of uh, you know a typical element here would look like one x one plus two uh, some a a a a x one to uh, uh, comma a a one x one comma a two x two comma a three x three and so on. Yeah. So I'll tell you where x size goes, and then you, uh, you uh, so once you know where the basis go, then a linear map is determined by how the how it acts on basis. Yeah. So g dot x i will go to x j where uh, where see remember g acts on the set x, so it will send x i to something. Yeah. That something is x j. 
So the so d d x on uh, this x two uh, d gives a bijection of x. Yeah. So that determines a linear map from on v x. So that is that is how the action is. Yeah. So in general, if you are given an element uh, uh, of v x, which is summation a i x i, then d dot uh, summation a i x i will go to a uh, summation a i g dot x i. Right? This the second dot here on the right hand side, which I'm trying to which I'm trying to circle, but unfortunately it's not working. Is um, is uh, is basically the action of uh, g on x. Okay. So that is uh, uh, that is how this uh, this thing works. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, this um, representation goes. So V X is a representation of G, and this representation is called the permutation representation. Yeah. So given any action, uh, it leads to a uh, uh, given any action of G on a set X, it gives you a representation, that, that which, is, which is V sub X. Yeah. Any any questions? No. Okay. Then um, uh, <coughs> then this V X representation is called a permutation representation. Yeah. And uh, if you think about it, um, what is the matrix it goes to? So if you fix if if uh, you know V X, um, there is a natural basis X one to X n. Yeah. So with respect to that basis V X uh, G L V X, you can think of it as uh, N cross N matrices, yeah. So, uh, so where does this? Um, so, what is the image of rho g? It will be a it will be a permutation matrix. If you consider the matrix of uh, g with respect to this basis x one to x n, it will be the permutation. So, if x one goes to let's say x three, then uh, in the uh, in the first row you will have all zeros except uh, except at one place, which is the third place. It will be one. Yeah. So you'll get a get a permutation matrix. Yeah. So it will be in each row and in each column you'll have exactly one one and uh, rest will be zeros. Uh, so so that's why it's called a permutation representation. So uh, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah. So these are the representations which are uh, this are somehow easier to understand. Yeah, because uh, the matrix etc. You can determine very explicitly. Yeah, and somehow um, yeah. Uh, so there there is a, a good example of this representation which is very useful as well. Yeah. So which uh, which we'll talk next. Yeah, which is called the regular representation. So. If you think about uh, G, so uh, G is a finite group, it acts on itself you know, via you know uh, multiplication on the left. You know? so it uh, if you think of that representation and, uh, and then make a vector space out of it and do the uh, permutation representation, what you get is a regular representation. Yeah. So I'll, I'll write it down uh, more neatly now. So, so I'll go over it more neatly now. So you think of it, uh, think of this, uh, uh, this vector space Kg, yeah? whose elements are uh, summation Ag times G, where G is in the base field K. So K could be C or R or whatever. Yeah? So the what is the dimension of this vector space Kg? Is same as the size of, G, yeah. So uh, the dimension of this vector space is same as the size of G, and uh, this vector space is it's not just a vector space; it's actually a ring. You can multiply two elements, so uh, so it's a it's called a group ring, yeah. So because uh, elements of these uh, groups you can multiply, so you extend uh, that multiplication linearly to these sums as well. Yeah, so that makes uh, kg into a into a ring as well. Okay, so now uh, what? Uh, so if we if we mirror, uh, imitate the earlier um, construction, what is the uh, what is the representation? So how does uh, the representation work? So if you take an element h in g and a typical element in kg, you send it to this particular guy. Yeah. Uh, summation a g h times g. 
So this is, uh, uh, and this is, uh, um, this is, uh, uh, this, this is a linear action one can show. In fact, it, it's a permutation representation. And, uh, you know, so you can also compute what is the coefficient of G. So here I've given you the coefficient of HG is AG. So what will be the coefficient of G? It will be AH inverse G. Yeah, so you can, you can write it in terms of coefficients of G as well, explicitly. So this uh, this representation is is the regular representation, yeah. Uh, so this is a very useful representation. Yeah, in the afternoon you will see many um, um, uh, uh, some exercises on it, and uh, in the in this course you will, uh, in this uh, four day workshop you will see uh, uh, how one uh, one uses this representation, regular representation, to to study many other things. Yeah. So this is. Uh, this is one of the most uh, important representation uh, for this course. Okay, the regular representation. So it uh, so in particular, uh, uh, this representation contains uh, building blocks of all representation. Yeah. So uh, so it's a it's a it's a very important representation. So now we will uh, do some. Uh, uh, we'll, uh, so from a representation, there is something called a sub-representation and things like that. So we'll define some more representations uh, um, from uh, from some given representations, and uh, we also want to show that uh, every representation you can break it into some building blocks uh, called irreducible representation. Yeah, and then um, uh, later on we will see that every irreducible representation sits inside regular representation. So that is what I meant that every representation, this uh, regular representation contains building blocks of all, all representations. So let uh, V be a representation of G, a subspace W of V is called a sub-representation of V if, uh, if uh, it is stable under all the elements of uh, G, yeah? under the action of all the elements of G, which means that for all G in G, Rho G of W. W. Sir, the two representation that we have considered, uh, both yeah. are permutation representation only. Yeah. So how they are different? Because if I replace X with G in the first uh -huh. replacement, so if I don't use the properties of the group, then they are yeah, so second one is a special case of the first one, yeah? Yes. So, yes. so regular representation is a special case of the permutation representation. Permutation representation is you know, a little more general. You, know, you take any group action uh, of uh, G on some set, you can make this permutation representation. This is a particular representation, yeah? Given any group, this is a unique representation you can make, yeah, Re which is the regular representation, which is G acting on itself. Yes. Okay, makes sense? Yes. So this is third is a special case of two, but it's an important representation to keep in mind, this uh, regular representation. Okay. okay. Yeah. So now if you are given a representation, a, a subset of a, a, a subspace of V, and uh, say, um, uh, if you act on uh, any element of W, it lands in W, then you say that uh, W is stable under G action or W is a sub-representation of V, yeah? Sub-G representation of V. So, uh, so you, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, this action leads to a, a homomorphism from G to GLV. And uh, of course, uh, this W, uh, if W is a sub-representation, it will give you this. But uh, to write down these automorphisms, in uh, these, uh, these linear maps in terms of matrices is not so easy, yeah? Because there is no natural choice. But uh, thinking of it as linear map is easy, yeah? You just restrict uh, the linear map to the subspace. That is what rho, rho W of G is. Yeah, rho sub w of g is you just uh, restrict it to this uh, uh, this w, and by hypothesis, um, it's a it's a um, linear transformation of w. Yeah. 
invertible linear transformation of it. So that is what a sub-representation is. Yeah. So for instance, uh, a regular representation, uh, if you consider this, uh, this guy, you consider the sum of all elements of G, yeah? And uh, take a scalar multiple of, uh, of uh, this particular term. So it's a subspace, yeah? You're just taking sum of all elements of G and just taking all scalar multiple of it. It's a one-dimensional vector subspace of uh, Kg, of uh, the regular representation Kg. And uh, uh, so this, uh, uh, the, and this is stable yeah, because, you know, if you act, uh, if you take H dot W, you again get W. Yeah, nothing changes because, you know, the sum remains the same. So, so, so it is, so W you can see is a trivial representation and it is a sub representation of regular representation as well. So we can see that uh, trivial representation is indeed a sub representation of regular representation. Yeah. And uh, in the exercises today in the afternoon, um, I will never will, uh, or you can work out yourself that uh, every one dimensional representation sits inside regular representation. Okay. And uh, later in the course, we'll see that every, uh, every uh, what is called an irreducible representation sits inside a regular representation. Okay. So now uh, we will head towards what is called the complete reducibility theorem. Yeah. So this is the main lemma uh, for it. So if you have a, a representation, so, uh, and so now the uh, characteristic of the field is zero, yeah? So, uh, yeah. so I, uh, unfortunately, I still can't write. <coughs> but uh, remember the base field is characteristic zero. So let uh, rho from G to GLV be a representation and W be a sub-representation of G. Uh, then what we can say is that there exists a W0, uh, a, a sub-representation, sub another sub-representation of uh, V such that V is, uh, v is the direct sum of, so V is a vector space and it contains W and W0 as subspace. So what, uh, uh, what we can say is that W is a complementary uh, subspace of, uh, W0 is a complementary subspace of W. That means V is W plus W0. Okay, so so what uh, so what it says is that you can find uh, so of course if you are, if you give me any subspace of V you can always find a complementary subspace, yeah. But uh, what it says is that you can find a complementary subspace which is also a sub representation, yeah. Which is uh, which is not all uh, which may not always be true if uh, for instance if if your field is not characteristic zero this may not always be guaranteed. So it's, uh, uh, there is some work that needs to be done. So, uh, so I have written W prime, but it's W zero is a I W zero is a complement of W in V, and W zero is stable under G. This W prime should be W zero. Okay. So let's see a proof of this. Uh, this is the main theorem of this um, the first lecture. Yeah. So. Uh, so how do we construct uh, W zero? Yeah. So first we take construct. So we we know how to construct any complement. Yeah. So the way to construct a complement is you take a projection. You take any projection. So how uh, from V to W. So how do you take a projection? Maybe you take a basis of W and extend it to a uh, whole of V. Yeah. And uh, so on the basis elements, uh, you define this map P to be identity. Be, uh, on the basis of W and on uh, on the other uh, elements, you define it to be zero. Yeah? So that is how you uh, take a projection of uh, V to W. So P is a projection, so which means that P, P of X is X and uh, for all X in W and P is linear. Yeah? So you can think of P as an endomorphism of uh, V such that it's, its identity on W and, uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, and the image is, is exactly W. It, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it doesn't go outside W. Okay. And I told you how to do it, yeah? 
uh, you start with a, a basis of W, you extend it to a basis of V. Yeah, and then on uh, so you say that on basis of W, it's identity, and on other pieces, it's all zero. Yeah. So if you take W prime to be kernel of P, then of course uh, uh, the basic theorem we know is that W prime plus W is whole of P. Yeah. Uh, so you'll get a short exact sequence W prime V W uh, and uh, zero zero on the on the left and the right. So that tells you that uh, the V is W prime plus W because it splits. Okay. So, uh, so, but I mean, we chose this uh, uh, projection randomly. So there is no reason for W prime to be a sub representation. Yeah. So we will have to do a little bit of work to make sure W prime is also a sub representation of, uh, of V. Yeah, it's, it's a subspace, but we'll have to. So, so this, uh, this projection may not work, but maybe we'll, uh, we'll uh, modify the projection somehow. And uh, then maybe it will work. So the technique is uh, is usually called the averaging technique. Yeah. So so you define a new projection, uh, which we call P zero. Yeah. And uh, so so we'll uh, so I'll tell you what it is as a linear map, and then we'll check that it is indeed a projection. So uh, what you do is consider rho g inverse. Uh, followed by P, followed by rho G. Yeah, I'm reading it backwards. And take sum over all such G in G and divide by one by order of G. Yeah. So this uh, this one over order of G makes sense only when characteristic of K is zero. Yeah. Otherwise, you can't divide by this thing. So this is where we are using the fact that K has characteristic zero. Okay, so this is uh, this is composition of three linear maps. So this particular term is linear, and of course, some of linear maps are linear. Yeah. So P zero is a linear map. We just have to check that it is it is indeed a projection uh, on on W. So we'll have to check that. Uh, yeah, and it's a it's an endomorphism of V. It takes uh, it's, uh, everything is an endomorphism here of V. So. It's an endomorphism of V. So it has to check. Uh, so we'll have to show that the image is W and uh, on uh, elements of W, it's, uh, it's identity. Yeah. So let's take some element of X first. Yeah. Uh, so take an element X in V. Then, uh, then if you consider the action of P followed by, uh, so rho G inverse followed by P on, on X. Yeah. So rho G inverse sends x, uh, x to an, another element of V, and then if you compose it with P, it, land, it will land in W, because the image of P is W. Now P, remember, is a projection. So this guy is in W, and W is a sub-representation. So if I compose it with rho G, if I apply rho G to it, it will still land in W, yeah? So that tells you that uh, it, no matter which element of uh, V we take, we always land in W, yeah? So, so the image of P zero, uh, so so image of this uh, this composition is in W, and hence uh, you know even if you take sum and divide by order of G, it will uh, the image will land in W. So that tells you that uh, that image of P zero is in is in W. Yeah. Now let's take some. So that tells you that image of P zero is in W. Now we have to check the other fact that uh, P x equals x. Yeah, for x in W. So now you take uh, something in uh, something in W, and then apply apply this uh, uh, this composition, uh, this term only. Yeah. So what happens uh, uh, to the uh, uh, to to x? So it uh, you know it uh, it becomes rho g inverse of x, um, but this rho g inverse. Uh, uh, of x actually lies in, so w is a sub representation so this rho g inverse of x lies in w and uh, p is identity on w so it will again be rho g inverse x yeah so this uh, this uh, this term is simply rho g rho g inverse x again yeah but rho g rho g inverse x is just uh, x yeah so you get that uh, this is x is this clear guys yeah, so so this this term this uh, this term in the sum yeah uh, sends uh, x to x 
And uh, so, uh, so if you sum it g times, then it will send x to size of g times x. And since we are dividing by order of g, it will send again to x. Yeah. <coughs> so that tells you that p0 of x is x well, if x is in w. So p0 is indeed a projection. Okay. And uh, hence, uh, we can take w0 to be kernel of p0, and uh, w0 will be a complementary subspace. Now the point is, uh, this W0 will work. Yeah. So this W0 is will is a subrepresentation of uh, B, and uh, and um, um, so uh, so we we will just verify it, and that's it. That will prove the uh, theorem. Yeah. So let's just verify that this is a subrepresentation. So let's stay. So this is this is this is because of the averaging. So uh, so you'll see how it works out. Yeah. So, so note for G in G, if you take rho G inverse P0 rho G, you again get P0, yeah? Because uh, if you, you just look at this expression, so it, maybe rho H I should have done, yeah? So, so because it's just reordering, so it's multiplication by H, uh, uh, HG here and uh, HG, uh, HG inverse here, yeah? So it's just reordering this, uh, this sum. Instead of G, you are, you you sum it over H G. Yeah. So so just check that uh, this uh, when you do this, then you get uh, P zero more or less by definition of P zero. So so what does uh, this identity tells us? That tells us that rho G of uh, so if you move this uh, this uh, one of these term on the other side, you get rho G P zero is same as P zero rho G. Yeah, so P zero commutes with uh, rho G for every G. Yeah, and that is uh, uh, so. This is true for every G in G. Yeah? So now, if you take X in W zero, so we have to show that rho G X uh, is again uh, uh, is in W zero again. Yeah. So, but that is now easy because you know uh, uh, you, we just use this. So P zero compose rho G of X. With, yeah. Are you taking the range of you know, W0? Yeah. It, it, I think you wrote the kernel, right? Yeah, W0 is the... Uh, um, it should be range, right? Um, yeah, W0 is the... W0 is the kernel, right? You, It's right. The, W not is both the kernel. Uh, w not is the uh, um, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so I may have. Um, no, W not is the kernel. Range is W, right? Range of P not is W, and W not is the kernel. That is okay. Yeah. So uh, P not P not is again a projection onto W itself. It's not onto W not. Okay. Yes. So W not is in the, the last in the last equality when you are writing rho G composed with P not X. Uh -huh. so P not X will become zero, right? Hello. Um, yeah, so P not X does become. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, the, the, it's yeah, wrong yes. in the last equality. It should be equal to zero, then rho G X will be. Will be yeah, better. yeah, so, so maybe the proof here is a bit uh, dicey, yeah? So we want to show that, uh, but it, it is still okay, yeah? So what do we want to show? We want to show that rho G X yeah, it is zero. So we want to show that uh, uh, if X is in W zero, then we want to show that uh, rho G of X is also in W zero, yeah? So to say that rho G of X is in W zero, what do you have to show? If you apply P naught, it, it becomes zero, yeah? It should be in the kernel, okay? So, so now, um, if you have x in w zero, so p naught of uh, so we want to show that p naught of rho g of x is is uh, is zero. Then we will know that rho g of x is in w zero. Yeah. But uh, p naught of uh, rho g of x is same as rho g of p naught of x, which is uh, sorry, this should be zero. Yeah. This is what you are saying. Yeah. So 
So this should be zero. I don't know why I wrote it rho g of x. So this should be zero. Yeah, so please, uh, so I'll make this correction, but uh, you're right. So this should be zero, which will imply that uh, rho g of x is in W zero. Okay, so this last term here should be zero. And uh, which implies that uh, PG of uh, rho g of x lies in the kernel of P zero, which is uh, which is W zero. Okay. So that completes the proof of uh, proof of uh, this uh, this theorem that uh, we found a W zero, which is uh, which is a sub representation. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, so that uh, so we will use this to uh, to show that every representation can be re uh, can be decomposed into small pieces, yeah, of what is uh, what is called period. But before that, uh, if you have two, uh, so yeah, so maybe uh, you know um, we also want to talk about maps between representation. Though these are not uh, this is not as uh, useful a statement uh, as useful a concept because of the things you will see. But, uh, but anyway, whenever we study some objects, we also study maps between them, yeah? So if you are given two representations of uh, G representations, V and V prime, then we want to study um, ma maps between these two representations in some uh, which satisfy a certain nice property, meaning uh, uh, it preserves the structure in some sense, yeah? So, uh, so a linear map tau from V to V prime is called G equivariant or a homomorphism of representation, if you like. So, uh, I mean, G equivariant is more used, not uh, this homomorphism of representations is not that much used, yeah? If uh, tau composed rho G is same as rho prime G composed tau, where rho prime is this other representation. So if you if you write in terms of action, what it means is that um, you know uh, first you do g dot v apply tau that is same as uh, first you apply tau and then apply g. Yeah. So tau and g are sort of commutative. Yeah? Or you can write it as rho g is same as uh, um, tau inverse rho prime g composed. Uh, Tau if uh, if if tau is an automorphism, yeah. So so maybe uh, the, so uh, uh, so this this equivalence only works uh, for the last part, yeah. So if tau is an isomorphism, then uh, and then uh, you can get rho g from rho prime g, and uh, then you say that the two representations are isomorphic or are similar, and it's called similar because. Uh, you know, the matrix somehow is sort of similar to the a sim, a matrix of uh, rho is somehow similar to the matrix of rho prime. Okay. Okay, so this is how, uh, this is what G equivalent maps are. Now, if you are given two representations, V1 and V2 of uh, G, uh, this is where I really need my pen because this part I thought I'll just do it in front of you. But uh, never mind. Um, so I say V1 and V2 are two representations of G, then V1 plus V2 is also a G representation. And how does the action go? So G dot V1 comma V2 is basically G dot V1 comma G dot V2. Yeah? Or uh, if you want to think in terms of matrix, it's block diagonal matrix. Yeah? So the matrix for uh, matrix for representation on V1 followed by matrix for representation on on V2 and on the off diagonal you think of zero matrix. Yeah, that is how. So the dimension of this matrix is uh, dimension of V1 plus dimension of V2. So you make this block diagonal matrix for each each G. Yeah? So that is how this uh, direct sum representation comes in. So let me let me try to restart once more. Maybe this time it will work, uh, and then see if I can write it down. Yeah. One second. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Any questions? Hello. 
Okay, maybe it was some noise. Okay. Okay, so let's... Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, I'm still not able to write it. So, uh, so I don't know what is wrong somehow. Yeah. So I'll have to fix this. So yesterday, even today, in the beginning, I was able to write it, but something... Do you have any other writing? Uh, no, I don't, don't have a, another writing. Oh, uh, Munis, so you can use the whiteboard of uh, this Zoom. So you see, at the right end, you can see a whiteboard. Uh, so why don't you try that? Uh, where is the whiteboard? Look at your look at the bottom of Zoom and right side, and yeah. you see a whiteboard's uh, notch. So you can whiteboard notch. Uh -huh. So just go down. Uh, I mean, look at the bottom of your Zoom. So yeah, yeah, I know. On on the mode, is it? No. So just first stop sharing. Stop this uh -huh. uh, this one. Okay. Maybe yeah. the window will pop up. Uh -huh. Now you see at the bottom. Uh -huh. Live transcript or something. Whiteboard, all the way right side, bottom right. Um, I there is leave button. There is a white transcript. Maybe that is. A... Okay, I, I let me show. So you can see share screen button. Yes. Then live transcript. Yes. Reactions. Yes. Apps. No, no apps. Uh uh. So after apps, it should uh, it should show whiteboard. So maybe maybe you are the host, so it, you can see something more. Are you having the uh, latest version? Ah, uh, that my uh, it updated today itself, so okay, it okay. should the latest version. Then I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. you have a tutorial, of course. In share screen itself, uh, there might be a whiteboard option. Share, uh, on share screen, maybe? Uh, Try that. Multiple um, advanced sharing option, I don't know. Advanced? Click the advanced, maybe? Don't no, it's not that. I think you should restart your iPad, that might work. Yeah, I may have to restart the computer, but uh, should I do that? Why don't you do? Yeah, don't do it. Maybe five yeah. minutes or three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's do that. Yeah, there yeah. will be still half an hour remaining. Yeah, yeah, do it. Let let me restart. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, looks like I can write now. Ah, so maybe I'll have to make you host. Yeah. Oh, but you are in associate. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. That's yeah. That's okay. I'll change it. No problem. Make host. Okay, go ahead. Um. Yeah, I should log off from this account. Yeah. Um. You are co-host now. You can share. Yeah, I'll, I'll share. Yeah. Is it visible? Perfect. Okay, good. So, uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's hope uh, this goes through rather smoothly. God. Okay. Never mind. So, uh, yeah, so the action on uh, the, uh, these things. Yeah, the action is uh, g, um, g dot uh, v1, v2 is, uh, is basically, uh, G dot V one, uh, yeah. G dot V one, comma G dot V two. Okay. So uh, so so um, in terms of row, if you like row G, if you think in terms of matrices, what I was trying to say is this uh, is row one G, where row one is the uh, homomorphism from G to G L V one, if you like. And uh, row two G, you get something like this, and then the off diagonals are zero. Yeah. So this is how uh, this uh, this uh, DX sum of two representations look like. Okay. So if you fix a basis of V one and fix a basis of V two, then uh, you you get a natural basis of V one um, DX sum V two, and this is how you can write down the representations of. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, with respect to that uh, basis, this is the matrix you get. Yeah. So V one plus V two is obviously uh, uh, with uh, with this action is a representation. Yeah. The, these are the linear maps I'm I'm giving. Yeah? Now, uh, if you uh, so this is one construction. Now, if V is a representation and W is a sub representation, then you can look at the quotient. V mod W is a vector space, and this is also a G representation. Okay, so there is a natural uh, G representation on this. Yeah? So I just have to tell you what is the G action and show that the G action is linear. Yeah? So the G action is uh, defined as G, G dot V plus W. You define it as G V plus W. Okay. So of course, one has to check that this is well-defined because uh, you know I'm looking at this coset. Yeah, V plus uh, uh, little, uh, so little V is in, is in capital V. So I'm using this rep, uh, representative of this uh, coset V plus W. So I have to check that this is independent of the choice. And that is where you will use the fact that W is a sub representation. So say V plus W is same as uh, V prime plus uh, V prime plus W. Then uh, this implies that V minus V prime is in W. Yeah. So that tells you that GV minus, uh, so G is linear, remember? So, so, uh, yeah. So maybe next time, uh, next talk onwards, I'll try to be the host instead of a co-host. Maybe that will help. Uh, I'll make you host right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Somehow things are not uh, going as smooth. Don't worry, don't worry. This is standard, don't worry. Yeah, so this uh, GV minus GV prime. Now, because I, it was okay, working on for my lectures, you can see those are much smoother. Yeah, so the, this uh, this will also lie in W because you know 
W is a sub representation. So that tells you that uh, GV plus W is same as GV prime plus W. Yeah. So that tells you that uh, this, this thing is well defined. It doesn't depend upon the choice of uh, the representative of the, this course at V plus W. So it is, and it is an action. Yeah. So that's not too difficult to see that, uh, you know, you just multiply by G inverse. So you see that it's an aut automorphism and so on. So just uh, easy to check. That is an action to check. It is, it is an action and it is linear. And linear. Because uh, G, the, the, the multiplication by G itself is linear on V. So it will be linear on V plus, uh, V mod W. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is how you make V mod W uh, another repre G representation. Okay. But uh, here, giving the matrix is a bit tricky, yeah? Because uh, if I give you a basis of uh, V and, uh, and then it's, there's no natural way to construct a basis, basis of V mod W, yeah? Here we could give because uh, there was a natural basis for V1 plus V2, if you give a basis of V1 and basis of V2. But that's not, uh, that's not true for the V mod W. So, so that's why it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to, uh, to write down. So of course, if, if you are given a matrix for G in terms of a basis of W extended to a basis of V, then it will be easy. But if, I, if you are given a matrix of G with, with respect to some arbitrary basis of V, then uh, getting a corresponding basis for V mod W is not, not so easy. Yeah. Okay. So now let's, uh, let, let's get to the definition of irreducible representation. So, uh, so a representation of G, we call it irreducible if it doesn't have any, if you can't make it smaller in some sense. Yeah? So it uh, doesn't have any non-trivial sub-representation. Yeah? So, of course, we will have two, uh, two uh, sub representation. One is the zero representation. So, if you take the zero subspace, of course, it's a, it's a representation, it's the zero representation. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and of course, V itself is a representation. So, ap apart, from, apart from these two sub representations, there are no other sub representations. Then you say that. Uh, that V is a V is an irreducible representation. Yeah. If it, it doesn't have any non-trivial representation. So for example, if you have a one-dimensional representation, by definition it is an irreducible representation. Yeah. Because it has no non-trivial subspace. Yeah. Forget about uh, sub -represent it, it So the only subspace is zero or uh, the whole thing. Yeah? So every one di dimensional representation is automatically irreducible. Yeah. But there are, of course, uh, um, um, many more uh, possible, depending upon the group, uh, there may be other, um, other uh, irreducible representation which are higher dimensional. Yeah. So uh, for, for abelian groups, these are all. Yeah? So for abelian groups, we'll see that uh, on all irreducible representations are one dimensional. But for non-abelian groups, you'll have, uh, so that in fact is a characterization. So for non-abelian groups, you'll have uh, um, higher dimensional representation, <coughs> irreducible representation. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the consequence of this uh, lemma, which we, uh, the theorem which we just proved is that um, every group representation is direct sum of irreducible representation. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so remember this is uh, and this is in characteristic zero again. So we will only worry about fields of characteristic zero. So it uses that theorem, which is true for characteristic zero. So the proof is pretty standard, yeah. After after the theorem, so you start with some representation. If it is, um, so we want to prove that it's the sum of irreducible representation. So if V is irreducible, you don't have to do anything. Otherwise, let W be a proper non-zero sub-representation of V. Then the theorem tell, uh, tells us that we can write V as uh, W plus W prime, where W and W prime both are sub-representations of V. Yeah? 
And uh, since dimension of W is less than V and dimension of W prime is also less than V, and they are both non-zero, <coughs> We can write them um, so by by uh, maybe induction hypothesis, if you like. We can uh, on on dimension of v, we can write both w and w prime as direct sum of irreducible representation, and hence uh, v will be direct sum of irreducible representation. Yeah. So so what we have seen is that every representation we can write it as direct sum of irreducible representation, and uh, later on we will see that. Uh, um, uh, see that in regular uh, every irreducible representation appears in in uh, in the regular representation. So let uh, V and W be. Uh, so now I want to define this tensor product of two representations. So we we have seen uh, some some definitions already. So the X sum of representation we have seen the quotient representation sub representation now the tensor product of two. So, uh, so I hope you have seen, most of you have seen what tensor product is, but if you haven't, uh, you can ask me and I, I'll try to explain a little bit. So you, is there anyone who, so maybe you can put it in the chat if you want to uh, know what tensor product of two vector spaces are. If you don't, then I'll just- uh, Yeah, I'll agree to agree would be nice. Okay, sure, so I'll, I'll tell you what it is, yeah? Um, okay. So maybe, yeah, so I, I can, I, I'll give you a brief, a briefly what it is, yeah? Uh, so not do the generalities of tensor product. So say V is a vector space. So say V and W are vector space. So it's, it, it consists of uh, maybe it has a basis, yeah? So V is, uh, V has a basis say V1 to Vn, and uh, W has a basis, basis W1 to Wm, yeah? Then uh, what we, one can do, uh, so, uh, so uh, a tensor product V tensor W is, is the notation usually. So tensor product is, a, is another vector space which has a uh, which comes equipped with a line, uh, bilinear map, yeah. So a map uh, which sends, um, let's say, um, yeah. So yeah, so it, it will send an element uh, v tensor uh, v comma w to an element. Uh, so. so it will tend send a pair v comma w to so uh, so this you think of it as uh, uh, a vector space generated by vi tensor wj yeah where well, i is between 1 and n and uh, uh, j is j is between 1 and m yeah it's writing very funny but um, i don't want to do anything about it right now yeah uh, because uh, at least it's writing. Yeah. So, so you consider the vector space generated by these these symbols, v i tensor w j, where i ranges from one to n and j ranges from one to n, and uh, uh, v comma w is sent to um, uh, and you take uh, so elements here are sums of these things. Yeah. So v comma w you send it to v tensor w yeah so v will be a linear combination of v1 to vn w will be a linear combination of w1 to wm and v tensor w you just extend it linearly yeah so uh, so uh, so this map if you fix w is linear in v if you fix v it's linear in w yeah and uh, so the tensor product you think of it as a Vector space with uh, with bases these kind of uh, these kind of symbols and uh, and together with this map yeah this linear map yeah so the uh, dim dimension of V tensor W is just uh, m times n yeah m times n dimensional vector space because you have those many base uh, terms 
But if you are not familiar with uh, with uh, with uh, tensor product, uh, um, then uh, then you can just take this as the definition. If you are familiar with it, then uh, uh, it's 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 some sort of a universal guy with this property that uh, that uh, this is a bilinear map. So then probably you know, but uh, I guess this is the best I can do uh, uh, for, for this four four lectures. Yeah. So this is uh, so so tensor product is a vector space who, whose basis looks like this. Yeah. Vi tensor Wj where uh, so somehow it looks like it's dependent on the choice of basis, but uh, but it is it isn't. Yeah. So if you choose a different set of basis. Uh, it will still be a m times n dimensional vector space and somehow uh, it, you can write it uh, um, write the other basis elements in terms of these basis elements and so on okay so it does not really depend upon the choice of the basis. now the uh, uh, the way uh, so is, so in the tensor product the elements are not just v tensor w it's sums of these kind of terms yeah so so, but uh, but once I know what happens on V tensor W, I know on uh, what happens on sums. You just uh, it has to be linear, yeah. So so you know how to how to uh, how to give the description on sums as well. So the action of G on V tensor W is G dot V tensor W is G dot V. So there is action of G on V at tensor g dot w. So you get an element of v and element of w, you can make a tensor product and get, uh, may, uh, you can cook up the symbol and get an element of uh, capital V tensor capital W. And this is the, this is the representation. So I can make it more explicit in terms of matrices. Yeah, so, and maybe um, in the, in the, um, in the afternoon, uh, maybe one will give a proof. Or one can give a proof of this as well. Yeah. So, so suppose um, you know. So you know what tensor product of matrices is. So if you have a n cross n matrix and an m cross m matrix, you can then form a tensor product of matrices, yeah? which uh, which uh, looks like this. Yeah. So you uh, it's a block matrix. A11 times B, A12 times B, A1N times B, and so on. So it is a MN cross MN matrix, yeah, because uh, you know each B is M, and there are N blocks of B, yeah. So N M N times M cross N times M matrix. So uh, so what happens? Uh, so this has order N N times N. So now if uh, if I want to know the um, what is uh, what is this matrix rho g uh, rho g of v tensor w? If I know uh, rho g of so see v has this basis v one to v n and w has this basis w one to w n. Yeah. So then rho g of v tensor w is same as uh, the tensor product of these two matrices. With us, uh, so I think uh, you, one has to. So if if you choose the basis for V tensor W to be in this order, I think this order is okay. So uh, V1 tensor W1, V1 tensor W2, and so on. V1 tensor WM, and then V2 tensor W. So it it will be this or the transpose of this order. But uh, I th I think the, this is this is the right order. Okay. So the so this is uh, if you take this basis then this is the matrix you'll get. So in that sense, this is fairly explicit, the tensor product uh, representation, okay? But tensor product is a very important representation. Uh, tensor product of two representation is a very important uh, uh, representation and uh, you can capture a lot of representations, uh, non-trivial sort of representations from, uh, from somewhat easy kind of, uh, uh, kind of representations yeah so so tensor product does a very um, is a very non trivial operations on representation though uh, i mean uh, it's explicit but uh, it leads to some non trivial representations okay so that's uh, tensor product of two representations Next is dual, but maybe I'll I'll do that uh, next time. I, I maybe I I should uh, let you ask some questions on on these things in the remaining uh, ten minutes. Yeah.
And so next time maybe I'll do uh, do dual representation and then start character theory. Okay, so are there any questions? Uh, sir, could you go to the proof of the first theorem? The theorem, yeah. Yeah, so here I should also correct this, yeah. So thanks. Maybe this, what, I'm, what this should say is this is zero. Yeah. Uh, sir, I did not understand this. Uh, uh, the line just after the root, Roji inverse, P0 times Roji. Uh, the, uh, the line just after this thing, Roji inverse, P0. Uh -huh. Yes, sir, I did not understand how this comes. From. Uh -huh. uh, why, why this is true? Uh, no, just, the, just before that. The one which you are highlighting before that. Huh, this this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you just look at uh, the expression for P0. Yeah. So the expression for P0 is this. Yeah. So maybe I can write it here. So P0, uh, uh, this will vanish one second. So P0 is 1 over G, summation G in G, um, and then uh, rho G, uh, rho G, P, rho G inverse. Yeah. So, so instead of uh, G, I'll use H so that this G and that G doesn't come. Yeah. So, so rho H inverse <coughs> P zero rho H for H in H in G is <coughs> so I can forget about one over G. I can pull it out. The sum also I can pull it out. What happens is is rho uh, H inverse rho G P rho G inverse rho H. Yeah, this is what you get. So now, if you uh, if you think about it, the sum is so rho is a group homomorphism. Yeah, so this you can write it as H inverse G P rho. H inverse G whole inverse, yeah? Because it's G inverse H, that is same as H inverse G whole inverse, yeah? And uh, the sum is over all G in G and you have one over order G, yeah? But you sum over, but this will also sum over all H inverse G as well, yeah? So I can put an H inverse here and that's also okay. So this is same as P. P0, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So that gives you this identity. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. If you, yeah, tell me. Yeah, sir. Uh, the way you have defined P naught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, why is that one by G naught, uh, one by order of G? Yeah, we want it to be a projection. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so we want on W, it should be, uh, it should be identity. On W, it has to be identity. Yeah. It should be identity. Yeah. Yeah. So you see, if I, uh, if I, uh, so you see this line. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, put that I can highlight it. You see this thing. Yeah. Rho G, yeah. Rho G inverse X is X for all X in W. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. not P naught. P naught is sum of these, and then you divide by one over order of G. So if you just do the sum, then what you'll get is size of G times X. Yeah. Which okay, is okay, okay. You want to divide Fine. also. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So actually, this is uh, the statement is false. If you if if your vector space, um, if your representation is not characteristic zero representation, vector space is a uh, is it is a vector space over a field of characteristic P and G G is a group of uh, is maybe a group of order P or something which is divisible by P. Then you can find a representation 
and the sub-representation such that uh, it doesn't have a complementary dimensional sub-representation. Okay, so, so this works only in characteristics. So in characteristic P, there is good reason uh, uh, that, that is, it's not even true. Yeah, so you can find things. Uh, so what you can say is that if the order of the G is prime to the characteristic of V, the characteristic of the base field, then you can do again do this. But uh, in general, you can't do this. Okay, so there is genuine reason for it. Any any other questions or comments? Uh, I have one question. Yes. You say you said that in characteristic zero that G stable uh, one can decompose this as this theorem above. This is mm -hmm. not true for characteristic P or characteristic yes. P. So can you give some one example or indicate something? Um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can look at. Uh, yeah, so I uh, maybe this will work. So you take Z mod PZ, uh, this will vanish. So I, yeah, so I haven't really looked, uh, written it carefully. So, but uh, let's hope this works. Yeah. So GL FP, yeah. Okay. So GL2 FP. So I, I'll give you two dimensional representation. Yeah. So you send one to this matrix. Uh, one, 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 zero. Yeah. So, so you can see that this is a group homomorphism. Uh, so, uh, two, you send two to, uh, uh, maybe I can write A to A here. Okay. So, the, this is a group homomorphism. You can just yeah. check. Yeah. And um, so, uh, so this, uh, but this doesn't have, uh, this doesn't have, uh, um, so the, uh, yeah, so this is a two-dimensional representation, and uh, um, it's a uh, okay. V two V two mod. Yeah, so I have to give you a sub-representation. Yeah, so, so it's zero comma something star. Yeah, so maybe one the vector uh, space one, one comma zero. zero one one. Go to, um, yeah, so I think. Uh, uh, one comma zero will uh, will be sent to uh, one comma zero. Yeah, will uh, will go to one plus a comma zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is so one the subspace. So this is this is two dimensional subspace. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of it as uh, FP square. So one comma zero. This uh, this column matrix. Um, uh, this column space is is a subspace, is a sub representation. So you consider, so yeah, a comma zero. Yes. So this is this is a in FP. This is this you can check is a sub representation, and it won't have a complementary dimensional sub uh, representation. Okay. Okay. So this will be uh, this will be an example. So it is a sub-representation which, uh, for which you can't find a complete representation. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, I have Gary. What is the motivation of reading representation to this? Yeah. So this I said in the beginning. Yeah. So um, you want uh, and basically the objective is to understand groups. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you may think that uh, defining the groups the way it is defined is, uh, is maybe it is easier to understand, but not quite. Yeah. So you don't people don't understand. Uh, people want to do things with. Uh, uh, um, uh, so understanding uh, groups uh, means uh, you you want to be able to do certain things. You know some certain classifications or certain other things with uh, maybe. Uh, uh, which comes in various theories, etc. You you would want to do certain calculations with it, yeah. And uh, representations are a way of understanding um, understanding these uh, these groups. Okay. So uh, so for instance, uh, see if if this row is injective, which is called a faithful representation, then uh, what you have got is a isomorphic copy of G in GLV, yeah. 
and uh, yeah, um, but uh, but you have uh, but you can think of elements of this as some matrices. Yeah. So some uh, some linear algebra comes in, and so somehow linear algebra is easier to understand. So that's uh, that maybe is um, at the basic level. Maybe that is one motivation to understand uh, to study representation. So you want to understand uh, groups using say linear algebra, and uh, somehow um, I, I believe linear algebra is way more easy than uh, than group theory. Yeah. So so that's one motivation. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sir, any reference books are available, sir? Yeah, so um, you can look at Fulton and Harris, yeah? And um, uh, linear representation. Uh, or the, and then there's another book uh, by Sher, J.P. Sher. These are the two books I, I followed for my representation theory course, and you can look at those two books. Sir, please repeat the lecture, sir. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll I'll uh, I'll share it with you guys. But uh, okay, maybe I can write it somewhere. Um, the screen is stuck. Ah, uh, yeah. Sir, so, uh, how to represent infinite groups? Any uh, sort of idea from here? So this definition, as such, the definition I gave you. Uh, uh, a row from G to GLV be a homomorphism. This works even for infinite groups. <clears throat> but of course, uh, some of the properties may not work. For instance, complete reducibility, et cetera, may not work. So people study the presentation of infinite groups as well. Uh, but, uh, but the study is, uh, is slightly more complicated. Yeah are much more complicated. Uh, so first one should try to understand uh, finite group representation and uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, then one can uh, try to study representations of more complicated groups like, uh, I don't know, uh, algebraic groups or uh, um, maybe, uh, uh, so somewhat more easy will be profinite groups, which are very close to finite groups. Uh, so, or some other more, um, you know, topological groups like Lie groups, etc. But uh, but first, uh, finite groups. So there is a there is a theory of uh, a representation of infinite groups as well. But uh, but all of that first assumes finite group representation and then goes on to build the general one. So let me just write down sir, the groups. Sir, also uh, we uh, looked at uh, representation of Z mod P Z. So what about uh, representation of Z mod P square or P to the power K Z? Like any uh, relation between them uh, from uh, Z mod P Z to G L to F P. So let's say Z mod P to the power K Z to G L to F P to the power K or something. Is there any uh, somehow? Uh, well, uh, F P power K is not uh, not really. I mean, it's a field. Uh, so, what is the field there? Yeah. So, um, so but I mean, you can find many representations. I gave you only one representation of where was it? But uh, but uh, let's not worry about those kind of representation where the base field is not characteristic zero. Let's just worry about uh, representations of uh, where the base field is characteristic zero. Uh, base field is characteristic zero. Yeah. So complex representation or uh, or uh, you know, real representations and so on. Mostly complex representation. Okay. The okay, other so repre other representations are modular uh, are called modular representation when the represent uh, when the base field is uh, the characteristic of the base field is say uh, divides the order of the group, they, those are called modular representation and very little is known about them, yeah? So I, I'm not really an expert in, uh, in representation theory even, forget about my, but uh, in modular representation theory, there are very few experts, meaning uh, in the sense that nobody, not much is known in mod modular representation, small less an open area, yeah? Okay, sir. Okay, sir, uh, thank you. Sir, uh, actually, you have defined tensor product of vectors, vector yes. spaces. Yeah. So we have a tensor product of matrices also. Yeah, that's a symbol. Yeah, tensor product yeah. of two matrices. Yeah. 
So if we take vectors like uh, V and W are two vectors, uh -huh. then tensor product of V tensor W can be defined as V W transpose. Um, uh, well, tensor product of once you have ten, um, yeah. So uh, tensor product of matrices is uh, what do you mean by tensor product of V uh, of vectors? I don't so. Uh, um, See, if you have two vectors, V and W, in two, yeah. uh, two vector spaces, yeah? Now yeah. let's take in the same vector space. Oh, V and W in the same vector space. Yeah. Okay. And then what do you want to do? V tensor W, let's define it to be as V W transpose. So, but this is not a, a it's an element of, it's a, it's a scalar, yeah? No, no, not V tens, uh, V transpose W. It is V W transpose. Yeah. Okay. So you you get an N cross N matrix. Yeah. So what yeah, do you yeah. do with it? Uh, so this is a matrix. Yeah. Now let's take A tensor B, where A and B are matrices. Uh huh. So that is defined to be as Kronecker product. What is defined to be a Kronecker product? A tensor A tensor B. A tensor B is that complicated matrix. Uh, uh, matrix, yeah. yeah. Whose size is N squared, provided yeah. A and B have same size, N. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so now my doubt is any matrix can be viewed as a, a N squared column vector. Any matrix can be viewed as what? N squared column vector. N squared column vectors. Yeah? Yeah. So... What is the equivalence of those two? That is V tensor W that is uh, defined as vectors and the tensor product of matrices. Is there any equivalence? It has to be somehow related, no? Um, I, not, I, I don't see why it has to be related, but uh, in this case, it may be because, you know, V, v, v W transpose is something like V I W J. So, but uh, but this is more like a computational thing. There is no uh, there is no conceptual way to think about, uh, or at least I don't see a conceptual way to think about it. But uh, uh, this uh, this A tensor B is defined for square matrices. Okay, both uh, if when both A and B are square matrices, then you define it to be a new square matrix out of it. Uh, so this uh, this was just a way to tell you how the matrix would look like if you are given a particular basis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is fine, sir. But my question is, it has to be somehow related to the concept of tensor product of vectors because each matrix can be viewed as a vector of some uh, higher dimension. Like if you take A to be as n by n matrix, it can be viewed as uh, n squared column vector. Yeah. So if we take A and B as N squared column vectors, mm -hmm. then there we have the definition of uh, a tensor product of vectors. Yeah. So we can make use of the fact that V uh, tends V W transpose. Yeah, but I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So they they may yeah. So this may be related, but uh, what does it give you? Yeah. And that's so, what I'm asking. How they are related? Yeah, I don't know. One has to write it down. So it depends upon how you think of uh, a matrix as an n square column vector. How do you uh, enumerate it and so on? Depends upon how you want to enumerate it. First, you want to stack all columns, or first, you want to stack all rows. All depends. On so actually, we did in both the ways representing a matrix as column vector, taking all columns first. But taking all rows next. Yeah, but this is somewhat explicit. So you can try to compute it yourself. Yeah. Okay, okay. And okay. see what you get. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe now we can wrap on this, maybe because yeah, maybe, yeah, I, yeah, I guess that's yeah. All right, so guys, uh, we we'll start at 2.30 and you will again uh, catch up with Manish and Rajesh as well. Okay, goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.